Hello, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates. And I was struck by a phrase in a blog. It was a social work blog by a social worker named Dana Bodenheimer. And I can't even tell you which social work blog it was, but <clears throat> She, she gave the Webster definition of trauma and it just jumped out at me and sort of blew my mind. So the title of this video is Narcissistic Abuse is a Wound to Living Tissue. That is profound. <clears throat> so let me read the Webster's definition of trauma. An injury, as in a wound, there's a frog on my background. <clears throat> An injury, as in a wound, to living tissue caused by an extrinsic agent an agent outside of oneself. The definition continues, a disordered psychic or behavioral state resulting from severe mental or emotional stress or physical injury. <clears throat> I love that first part. A wound to living tissue. Bang! That's it. <clears throat> Narcissistic abuse is a profound wound to your body and your psyche and your mind. Think of it as a physical, gaping, bloody wound to your psyche. It's living tissue. For me, the pain centers right here in my chest and in my belly. It's a wound to actual living tissue. <clears throat> I know I'm preaching to the choir here. If you have not gone through this, and you don't have the foggiest idea what it is, you're probably not watching this video, are you? And it's unfortunate, but if somebody hasn't gone through this, they just don't get it. They just don't get it. It's like you're speaking a foreign language to them. This condition, this syndrome, it's so physiological. Most issues that you would go to counseling for are not primarily physiological. And that's why this condition needs to be understood and it needs to be treated by people who know what they're doing. The wound that is so profound in your living flesh, your living tissue, is because of shock. You're with somebody that you love. You're with somebody who's always been a certain way. <clears throat> and then you discover that's not who they are. There's another identity, a dark identity who do, does not love you and seems actually invested in bringing great psychological harm to you. They're in that body. It's a nightmare. You guys know what I'm talking about. So <clears throat> part, part of what I want to discuss in this video is actually for therapists 
You folks who know what I'm talking about, take this link, send it to your therapist, and let's get a movement going to educate therapists. If you use a cognitive approach, in, in our practice, our big thing is you're not a victim. And I believe that. Um, I believe that <clears throat> I've taught this for 28 years, that in relationship, you, you, you have a magnet and you draw to yourself who you need to draw to yourself in order to reenact the wounds of your childhood. However, <clears throat> if you use that cognitive approach or any approach that gets somebody away from where they're at and you want to get them in their mind to rethink things to change their paradigm that stuff's fine but as you folks know when you have narcissistic abuse syndrome or complex ptsd you go sit in an office and picture this Somebody has poured gasoline over every square inch of your body and then they let you on fire. And you walk in a therapist's office and <clears throat> you're like, ah, I'm on fire. And then the guy sits there and says, I really think it's just your perception of what happened. I'm like, Fuck you, I'm on fire. And that's what, that's what re-traumatizes people is put the fire out. Put the fire out first. You can deal with all the theory shit later. Put the fire out. Let me tell you how to go about <clears throat> at least decreasing the intensity of the fire. Number one, don't interrupt them. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Listen. Listen. Acknowledge their pain. They're trying to describe something that's massive and when you interrupt them you're saying dude you only got this and what you do when you do that <clears throat> you're pouring gasoline on the fire acknowledge their trauma validate them validate them the most healing thing that i've experienced in this journey is when I found out about narcissistic abuse syndrome because I was validated. You guys know how powerful that is to have somebody say, I feel you, I see you, I understand what you went through, I understand that this isn't a normal breakup. I understand that that person you were with was dangerous. They were not a normal human being. <clears throat> Show empathy. Get them a tissue. Soften your voice. Give them a hug. Shut up. <laughs> put the fire out it's a wound to living tissue every square inch of their soul is on fire they don't need a lesson in all the shit that you know they need empathy and validation they need somebody to listen <clears throat> I went to a, a new doctor this week a cardiologist and the session started very clinical you know these days doctors 
don't get to sit in a chair and look at you. They have to sit in front of a computer and type. It's awful. Insurance companies require that of doctors. So one of the main qualities you need as a doctor is to type fast. So I thought, okay, let me get my prescriptions, get the hell out of here. Then he got to the situation about my life. And this man heard me. And then he <clears throat> mirrored back to me my situation, what I was going through. And then he sat there for 40 minutes and he gave me feedback. This cardiologist was far better at therapy than any of the therapists that I've been to. And I've been to some great therapists, but he heard the level of my trauma, <laughs> which means he's been through it. He didn't say that, but that's the only possible thing because <clears throat> I, I could see it in his eyes. He's been through it. He was one of my people. But I felt heard, I felt understood. We got to the end and he was talking about me maybe getting out there and dating. And he goes, now don't, don't need love too much. He says, uh, I'll love you. Your cardiologist loves you. Yes, so you're loved, so you don't have to go out there and need love too much from some woman. Um, <clears throat> therapist or friends, if you have a friend going through this. Um, if you shut them down, if you interrupt, you're pouring gasoline on a fire. Telling them that their pain is their own responsibility, which, you know, is probably true in the big picture of things. Our lives are our responsibilities. In my case, nobody made me get on Match.com, jump into a relationship after two dates, and then put a blind eye to the severity of the, the, the nastiness this person exhibited and to kick her out of my house three times and then go back with her three times. Nobody, nobody made me do that. <clears throat> I did that. But telling somebody who's on fire that it's their stuff, it really is invalidating. And it's invalidating of the shocking brutality and soul rape and soul murder that this person has just encountered with this extrinsic agent. <clears throat> yeah. This woman was my mother all over again, and it was about my mommy issues. But this woman existed, and she acted deplorably. She acted worse than any story I've ever heard. And when I'm in the moment, and I'm, I'm, I'm freshly traumatized, shut the fuck up, and just put the fire out. I hope people aren't offended by dropping an F-bomb, but dude, ain't no other way to say it. <clears throat> I'm going to share a couple of situations where this happened to me. And the reason I'm sharing is I want you guys to be aware, if you're freshly abused, you have to protect your living tissue because you're going to get re-traumatized and... There's going to be a whole array of people, even people who, who love you, who are going to pour gasoline on the fire, just out of pure ignorance. I, uh, <clears throat> I did a men's group for many years in my practice. Beautiful group of guys. Loved going. Great community. But the week that this happened, and for about three weeks after it happened, I would go... I was on fire. <clears throat> you couldn't even see my eyes. I was just like that, that Fantastic Four character, flame or whatever. I was just a big ball of fire, and I was screaming. And 
one fella came over and and I wanted to read I wanted to read what happened to me. I had it written down on a piece of paper. And he came over and said, "You don't want to do that." And um I was I was just uh expressing the intensity of my pain and they were like your pain isn't any different than anybody else's pain we're all in pain and the more that happened the angrier and louder I got and it was unprofessional of me but fuck it I, I could not help it I was not in a professional place at that time I was on fire um, and those fellows are beautiful fellows and um, wise fellows, but uh, they didn't know how to handle me in that situation. Um, in our in our community, everybody participates. So I was not only the group leader, but I was also a member, and I was at the most intense crisis point of my entire life. You take every crisis that I've had in 56 years, 55 years at that point, add them together and times by 10, that's what I was in, you know? And I've had a lot of crises in my life. So don't interrupt. If you interrupt, you're 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 re-traumatizing the person. It in, invalidates them. Don't, <clears throat> therapist, keep your diagnoses to yourself. It's not helpful to diagnose the person who's who's um, reactive and tearful, and has impulse control issues and their identity has been eroded and then you come along and stick them with a personality disorder that's not what they need and that's not what they have they have narcissistic abuse syndrome it just looks like being a borderline you know for a while because there's so much intensity and there's so much woundedness <clears throat> this Dana Bodenheimer, one of the quotes in her, her blog about social work, she said, I am not sure that we can do this work of working with people who have trauma unless we've been through trauma. And no statement has ever been said that's any truer than that. Unless you've been through trauma and you really embraced it, refer those people out you're not qualified. I don't care if you have a PhD and you've written a dissertation on trauma and you've written a book. If you haven't been through it, you're not qualified. And you're going to probably do more damage than good, even though you might sincerely want to help people. Do not judge somebody with narcissistic abuse syndrome. Do not shame them. This process of being re-traumatized, the trauma that you experience is bad enough. In my case, I, I can think of nine situations where I've been re-traumatized. Um, of course, number one was whenever a narcissist gets busted, do they humbly and remorsefully confess the whole truth? Hell no. They hide, deceive, and lie, and they give you little, little uh, morsels of truth along the way. This woman, my former fiance, had eight days with me before she went off to a supposed treatment center. It was actually a flying monkey center. And during that eight days, I might have been, I might as well have been staked to the ground and stabbed with a thousand knives and had my skin peeled off and then lit on fire. That's the kind of torture that I went through. She started at, oh, yeah, I, I had sex with him about 30 times. 
before it was over, eight days later, it was probably close to a thousand times. And then she went into great detail about some things that I did not need. And it, it destroyed me. So once you get your trauma, get away from the perpetrator. They are enemies of your soul. They are an agent that can cause you to kill yourself. They can destroy your career, destroy your finances. I thought I needed to know the truth. I was wrong. I was, I was bathed in gasoline and just absolutely engulfed in flames that got hotter and hotter and hotter and it consumed my spirit. So you can get re-traumatized obviously by the narcissist. No contact. Don't email them, text them, talk to them, see them, stalk them online, drive by their house. They do not exist. For the longest time, I thought I would cut off my right arm for an hour of conversation with this woman. But I got to tell you, if she showed up at my door today, I think I'd stare in the eyes for about three minutes, and then I'd shut and lock the door and call the police. There would be no conversation because I cannot put myself at risk to further injury. Some family members re-traumatized me by my brother who was wonderful during this. Um, and he saw me obsessing about the perpetrator and he, um, he, he would uh, yell at me and say, dude, um, you, this isn't right. And he'd yell and scream and be forceful. And that was re-traumatizing. It was extremely re-traumatizing, extremely hurtful. Friends who didn't understand re-traumatized me. Um, so there, there's so many ways, um, uh, church members, that treatment center she was in, a therapist I went to. You know what else will bring up trauma again is um, anything, anything that makes you feel powerless. Uh, if, if, if something happens and you don't get a voice and it's not accurate, somebody just unilaterally cuts off from you and you don't have a voice, it will traumatize you. I usually don't cry much these days, but I got to tell you that I did um, spend a good bit of time grieving and crying. Every single time, there is a sense of powerlessness that comes up. And, and uh, for me, <laughs> um, I probably have an incident like that about once a week, and it just ring brings me right back. So. You have an injury to living tissue from an extrinsic agent. So you need to treat your body, uh, go to yoga classes, um, participate frequently in deep breathing. It's wonderful. Get massages, meditate, exercise a lot. Do kickboxing, pace the room. Um, I, I, I told you guys that when I was at the treatment center, I was given these, these foam and rubber things, and this is, this is them. And, and I, would, I would sit and do this all day long during therapy. And yeah, okay, you look like you know Rain Man or something. You look a little goofy, but it works out some of the tension. Uh, if you have the kinetic energy in your system, get, get yourself some of these. I don't even know what to call them, but they work. So, and, and if, if need be, get on some medication, uh, but address the physiological shock and trauma and damage and gaping wound in the living tissue of your soul. So, 
my time is running out here. We're at 25 minutes. I, I think I'm going to make a, a separate video and, and pick up here where, where I left off. So protect your heart, protect the living tissue of your body, protect the living tissue of your soul. Do not expose yourself to re-traumatization from people who just aren't ever, ever going to understand. Get with people who understand. It'll, it'll save you. It'll help you to heal. It's hard to heal if a wound, the scab is ripped off every other day. It's going to take, it may never heal. You know, you got to get to where that wound is protected. And there is nothing victimy about this paradigm. It's just the truth of your experience. Imagine this. Imagine somebody who was abused in the, the death camps of Nazi Germany. And you survive that and you come home and you're, you're just shattered and you're overwhelmed with PTSD and your hands are shaking and you're weeping and you talk about your best friend or your, your spouse who is taken and killed. And then somebody says, well, it's just, you know, your perception of what happened. If you were truly evolved, you would know that the trauma was just within yourself. <laughs> Nobody would do that. Nobody would do that. Nobody would probably do that with a, a veteran of a war. But in love with somebody who is masquerading as a normal person, masquerading as somebody who knows how to love and somebody who's in an actual relationship, when they rip your heart out and light you on fire, people treat it like it's a normal counseling situation. It's preposterous. So take care of yourself, dear ones. Thank you for watching. Join our YouTube channel at Family, T Family Tree Counseling on YouTube. And I've got some, some good books on our um, website, familytreecounseling.com. God bless you.